In the year 2048, Israel will have 20 million citizens. 20 million in this small country and 15 million of them will be Jewish because in Israel you, you remain Jewish. You're listening to Inside Israel Today with Gil Hoffman on the Land of Israel Network. Hello and welcome to Inside Israel Today here on the Land of Israel Network on thelandofisrael.com broadcasting from Jerusalem on another exciting day when we have 70 days left until the Israeli election in which anything can happen and uh, the excitement is palpable here in the air in Jerusalem. Tonight I'm going to be going to an event of uh, our perhaps the competition to Netanyahu Benny Gantz, the former chief of staff of the IDF. But uh, what we're going to be talking about on our show today, we're going to be talking to uh, another former general, uh, to Uzi Dayan, who is running in the Likud primary on the 5th of February, already next week. Um, and uh, Uzi Dayan is a former deputy chief of staff of the IDF. Um, and uh, he's had a very distinguished career uh, in 1966. Uh, he already was in the IDF and he fought heroically in the Six Day War. Uh, he held many top positions in the IDF. Uh, he was the head of Central Command and it culminated with being Deputy Chief of Staff. He was the National Security Advisor to Prime Ministers Barack and Sharon. He's ha uh, been very active helping Israel socioeconomically, uh, running uh, organizations that help Israel uh, in that regard, like the Sterot Conference for Social and Economic Policy and uh, Mifala Pais. Uh, so what better person to continue our Meet the Candidate effort here, where we're introducing you to candidates from party after party here on Inside Israel Today. Uzi, thank you for coming on our show. Thank you very much, uh, Gil. It's, uh, it's, it's my pleasure. And, uh, you know, most of our, um, the people who are listening to us are not voters in this uh, campaign. So well, let's talk about this campaign from an uh, Israeli view point of view this election is this a a absolutely one. Uzi why are you running you've got such a great resume and everything why don't you just retire and relax on the beach well that you know all, all your life you are working for your uh, country and uh, you think this is the most important uh, thing to do so now it's a, it's a kind of how to continue and uh, do what is good for your country personally um, my drive is because of a very simple uh, figure. In the year 2048, Israel will be 100 uh, years old, and, um, and this young country in 30 years, you know, um, what is the, the shocking figure that uh, we have to, to get ready for it is that Israel will have 20 million citizens. Wow. 20 million in this small country and 15 million of them are going, are, uh, will be Jewish because uh, in Israel you, you remain Jewish. Uh, you speak the, the Hebrew, you live in the Holy Land, you are Jewish, you, you don't become something else. So we have to get ready and to, to make all the needed preparation uh, for such a big uh, number, and the uh, people like me want to be in this uh, in this uh, mission. You know, why why people why generals are going to politics in Israel? Yeah, I was going to ask you about uh, that tonight. We have this event of Benny Gantz. Explain to the listeners around the world who don't live in countries where generals are automatically uh, top candidates for leader of their country. Why Israelis have this obsession with generals? It's not that the Israelis are only, well, the Israelis are kind of uh, obsessions about it because generals did something in their life. I mean, uh, you know, in democracy, democracy is the best system to elect people who are the best people to rule the country. But by the time, and with the help of the media, uh, the people who are elected today is all over the globe is, are not, many of them are not the best people to rule the country, they are the best people to be elected. And this is something else. So generals, 
come first of all, let's say positive uh, first of all <laughs> thing about generals. They did something in their life. They didn't, they didn't did politics from politics or politics from uh, worlds. Uh, they, they did a lot for the country. Uh, number two is because they are famous enough. I mean, uh, people know when they, you say Uzi Dayan in Israel, people know what you're talking about. You can be a very good uh, school teacher or manager or to run a company and nobody knows about you. That's a good point. And, and, and then, you know, generals have to, to, to decide about a, a second career when they are uh, 50, 60, okay? And most people uh, continue to make their living or go to pension. Generals have to, to decide what, what, what to do next. And usually what they do is to continue, at least in my case, to serve your country. Now, can you tell me about Benny Gantz a little bit? You, you did serve under him, or where he served under you. Uh, well, <laughs> I know about uh, Benny Gantz as general, but as a politician, we, we don't know. And we know nothing about nothing. him. He remained. <laughs> he 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 chose to to remain silent. So uh, it helps. Uh, you know, at the beginning. This is a very short uh, election uh, campaign and very aggressive as everything in the Middle East. I don't know. I don't think we'll be shocked today when he will open his mouth and say. I, I guess that we'll get the same slogans. Uh, you know. Uh, peace and uh, security and uh, to do everything for your country and uh, to help the people and uh, take Israel forward, uh, etc. This is a problem, you know, the, there is no right and left in Israel anymore. There is, uh, as people say, right and wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And, and I think that Benny Gantz's uh, main problem will be to, to, to try to, to look very right, <laughs> uh, which is not. And um, I know we don't belong, uh, let's say, to, to, to the same, uh, political as camp. they call in Israel, Machanet, the yeah. same uh, political uh, group. And, uh, and, in this election, uh, our, I see, the right wing and especially the Likud party, main mission is to, to get enough mandates. We are now 13, we are the first, uh, uh, you know, um, party. Uh, but the problem is that with 30 mandates, you can be elected, you can win the election. But it's very, very hard to rule and uh, the, the country. Uh, you need, we need about ten more mandates, and uh, this is one of the reasons that I, uh, I'm in the Likud party for more than ten years. But I uh, joined the political uh, campaign in order uh, that the Likud will get ten more mandates. And here there is a we we have a clash, a direct fight with the. Uh, people like Benny Gantz, who came from, I don't want to say from nowhere, they came from, from the Israeli army, but nobody knows, everybody, when, nobody knows nothing about what is political view, uh, he doesn't have enough ex in, experience in politics, uh, in the news, something else, and um, we see it's interesting, uh, I don't think that we'll be shocked when he will open his mouth and uh, we'll see in the next weeks, the next two months, uh, uh, what's, what is going to be in this election. So it could take time to figure out what he actually stands for. Now, you also founded a party in the past uh, that was called Tafnit. Um, and then you realize that your place is in a ruling party that has to be able to govern. Why do you think the generals keep on doing this? Last night there was a former general uh, named uh, Gal Hirsch who formed a party, Bogia Alonis formed a party. Uh, why don't, aren't they joining Likud and Labor like they used to do? It is a mistake. And uh, as you say, the, I know that it, it, this was a mistake. The idea is because generals want a shortcut usually. 
and they want to, you know, to <laughs> complete the mission very quickly. It doesn't go in the Israeli politics. You have to be there uh, for a long uh, time and to see the people and that people will know you almost personally. It's, it's still a small uh, a country. The problem, the democratic problem with such uh, parties like uh, Gantz and Yalon and uh, maybe other is that about, uh, you know, in the Israeli parliament there are 120 mandates, uh, seats. And um, in the next election, in the coming election, in the a, a new Knesset, the Israeli parliament, I think that there will be 70, 75, maybe 80 people uh, uh, Knesset members won't be elected by the Israeli citizens. Oh, they'll they be elected be just in a party. The, the, the party leader decides on his own. Yeah, well, almost everybody, I don't know, Kahlon, uh, Lieberman, Bennett, okay. uh, Bogi, uh, Yalon, um, Benny Gantz, they just uh, select, Yair uh, Lapid, of course, they, they select people put it uh, in, in, in their list, and the Israelis has to vote for the whole list, and they, they, they don't have any influence in who is there. The, the Likud party, and in a way, the, the Labour party are the, the last democratic, really democratic uh, uh, parties. And this is a problem, because then the, this mem Knesset member jump from one party to another, and some of them in uh, this coming uh, government, this coming uh, Knesset, will be jumping a uh, third time in their life from one party to another. And they don't care about the Israeli people. They, they care about one man who is uh, deciding what, uh, in, in which place they will be listed. And uh, I, I think this is the main threat on uh, democracy in our very democratic uh, country. Well, it's a very big risk. Uh, you ran in the primary of the Likud in 2009, and uh, you were 42nd on the list. And because of that, you didn't end up getting in, though you came close. Um, here also, you have no guarantee that in the Likud primary that they're going to give you a realistic slot because there are so many slots reserved for new candidates from various mm. regions around the country. And you're running on the national list uh, with that's so much harder to get in, right? Why are you taking this risk? You're right. There is a risk here in democracy, in election. There is always a risk. But I... I <laughs> I'm not afraid of risk. I took much <laughs> bigger risks in my life, and I'm doing the right thing. So um, I'm really doing the right thing. So I'm going to serve my country. I hope that it will uh, uh, be uh, the, the, for the best. And anyway, I'm going to stay in the Likud party and uh, helping my party and my way to prevail. Now, it's interesting. When you joined the party in your press conference with Netanyahu, my headline was, Uzi Dayan joins Likud, hails Netanyahu for fight on corruption. You praised Netanyahu as someone back then, July 2008, who was fighting against corruption. Uh, has he soured... Uh, how comfortable do you feel being with someone who's facing three different very serious criminal investigations? I feel very comfortable because I was uh, Benjamin Netanyahu commander in the Israeli special unit uh, for uh, uh, some years. I know him and I don't think that he is corrupted by the way. I think there is a, a campaign against him, but I'm still fighting against corruption, and the most corrupt thing now in Israel is that uh, there are uh, a lot of new parties which are not uh, democratic. Uh, I will continue. This is uh, my way. I know Benjamin Netanyahu very well, and uh, he is the best prime minister for Israel uh, uh, now in this uh, era. 
And uh, finally, you know, we are a very democratic and lawful country, and what will be decided uh, by, by the law and by the investigation. The, the problem is that uh, they, uh, you know, people here, some people here insist on having this uh, uh, investigation when we have uh, less than two months uh, election uh, uh, campaign. Uh, and so it will be continue after the election. The people will say uh, in their world what 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 the people in Israel uh, uh, first of all will say they word in the uh, in, in 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 the voting uh, uh, here and um, and then will continue to be a lawful country. So my last question. Uh, is uh, I wanted to ask about your family. You come from a very storied family of Israeli leaders and uh, generals and, and politicians. Do you have any memories uh, of your uncle Moshe Dayan, the, the famed uh, IDF chief of staff and war hero that you can share with our listeners from around the world? Well, that's true. I, I grew up in a, in a pretty famous uh, family with many different uh, views. Uh, but now, after 30, <laughs> 36 years in the IDF and uh, all the things that I am uh, doing, the, 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 you mentioned the Sderot Conference, I was national security advisor of two pi prime ministers, and uh, I'm a chairman of the youth movement in Israel. So I, I, I don't need any more to talk about my family. <laughs> my uh, my activities he <laughs> talk for uh, uh, themselves it's a uh, uh, it's interesting <laughs> let's say to to live with a, a such a famous name but uh, you know it's not names let's stop drop names and uh, continue to do our uh, our missions okay well I, I appreciate your time here and I wish you success next week in uh, the very tough election that you're facing in the Likud. Thank you very much, Gil. Listeners, that was Uzi Dayan, uh, Likud candidate for Knesset and former deputy chief of staff of the IDF. Stay with us. After the break, we'll talk more Israeli politics. The Little Spacecraft is a book being launched today in Israel, literally launched by Dr. Mom as part of her company, Stellar Nova. In just a few weeks, Israel is sending a spacecraft to the moon, and her book is going to be on board. It's still amazingly exciting to think that you're drawing a picture that's going to go to the moon, to think about what else we can learn, and this whole world that there's so much left to explore. Listen in to my show, Rejuvenation, with Eve Harrow, as I interview a brilliant chemist and mom who is trying to excite the kids towards science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. If you get excited about it when you're young, it's a passion that will never leave. Listen in to Rejuvenation on the Land of Israel Network. And we're back here on Inside Israel Today on the Land of Israel Network on thelandofisrael.com after an exciting interview with Uzi Dayan, the former Deputy Chief of Staff of the IDF, who's running in a very, very challenging primary inside the Likud party. And we've got about 500 candidates, I think, last time I checked, who are running for 30 realistic slots on the Likud list. A lot of them are reserved for new candidates from various regions, people who you've never heard of. Uzi Dayan is running for one of the very few can, uh, slots reserved for people running nationally. He has to be meeting people all over. He has to be running against the sitting uh, Knesset members of the Likud, along with Gidon Saar, who's making his comeback, along with the Nir Barkat, the mayor of Jerusalem until recently. Not an easy field. And last time he ran, he was 42nd on the list. So... Look, this election is very interesting. You see all kinds of super qualified people who are running, and you'll be meeting them here on Inside Israel today as we have you meet the different candidates. And uh, our show last week with Tehillah Friedman from Yeshatid received a lot of positive 
feedback from because she's so uh, young and energetic and, and idealist and it's really beautiful to see candidates when they're still in that stage before they get all cynical and, and, and jaded and frustrated um, and uh, we'll try to get you candidates from a lot of different parties over here on our show uh, last week uh, there was a, a backlash I guess from uh, the Zehut party where the uh, I guess we have a lot of listeners who support the Zehut party of Moshe Faglin, and uh, they didn't like it that Tehillah Friedman said that hers was the only party that really focused on matters of religion and state. Zehut definitely has a strong platform on that issue, and uh, perhaps we will have a candidate from that list coming up on our show ahead of the April 9th election. We'll, we'll see what ends up happening with that party. They have a primary going on today. And we'll see who their candidates are going to be and whether they'll be bringing in any uh, celebrities into their list. So after there were so many complaints to me that I didn't interview yet anybody from the Zahut party, it turns out that Josh Haston interviewed Moshe Faglin himself ahead of the Zahut primary uh, yesterday on his show, which you can hear on the Land of Israel network. Our Zahut fans out there, but Likud is just as legitimate as a party, and I'm glad that I had a uh, candidate from Likud today and uh, more parties on the way here. Uh, we are equal opportunity offenders here on uh, the Land of Israel Network, especially my show. Um, and so tonight, uh, I'm excited that tonight is this opening rally of the Israel Resilience Party of the former chief of staff of the IDF, Ben Gantz. This event tonight could be a turning point in the election. On the one hand, perhaps he will wow the people of Israel, give a motherhood of an apple pie Israeli equivalent speech where he speaks only about things that Israelis like and manages to continue to not give opinions on anything particularly controversial. And perhaps this will present him as a leader who could be a serious alternative to Netanyahu. Uh, perhaps he'll be um, bringing in over the next few weeks former chiefs of staff of the IDF like him to run with him, like Abi Ashkenazi, Moshe Yalon. Moshe Yalon in particular could give him a more of a right wing image to Benny Gantz that he desperately needs right now, especially if you have um, former Netanyahu aides uh, like. Yoaz Hendel and Svi Hauser running from Yalon's party that would merge together with the party of Benny Gantz. Um, maybe this is the start of some, uh, an election being more exciting after until now Netanyahu's Likud has gotten twice as many seats as any other party. But then again, maybe tonight will be the start of Israelis realizing that Benny Gantz doesn't have what it takes. That he really just is a, another empty general without opinions and without much to say. And he could end up fizzling out after the speech tonight. You never know. Uh, Benny Gantz was close to another former chief of staff of the IDF. His name was Abnon Lipkin Shachak. He announced with great fanfare in 1998 that he was running against Netanyahu for prime minister uh, in a big press conference. He also showed that he had charisma and was good looking and people didn't take him too seriously after that speech and now people are mocking it. After a few months, he wasn't even the leader of the party that he formed, the center party. That was given to Yitzhak Mordechai, the outgoing defense minister from Netanyahu's government who had a fight with Netanyahu. And when Ehud Barak ended up winning the election, Neither of those people ended up being defense minister. Barack kept that job for himself. And it turned out that Yitzhak Mordechai was the transportation minister, that Amno Likman Shahak was the tourism minister. And a few months after that, he ended up just retiring and died a man who uh, is a symbol of futility, of lack of success among former generals. You never know. These generals, uh, they start with a lot of potential. Uh, you have to understand that Israelis feel safer when a general is in charge. Um, Netanyahu himself uh, accomplished a lot in his military career. 
He's persuaded Israelis that he and only he can make them feel safe. But if you have three former generals running together, they can say, Netanyahu is not the only Mr. Security. We can be Mr. Security and uh, have Israel run by a security figure who's clean, who doesn't have all these criminal investigations hanging over their head. Over the last 40 years, when the Likud has lost, it's been only to a former chief of staff of the IDF, to Yitzhak Rabin, and to Ehud Barak, with one small exception. Not Ariel Sharon, who people forget ran in Likud when he got elected, but Ehud Olmert in the 2009 election, who ran on the coattails of Ariel Sharon. And people, I don't know, I guess they thought they were voting for him anyway, even though he had had a stroke. At least right now in Israeli politics, it seems you have to be a former general in order to succeed. Perhaps this election will get more exciting. Perhaps the election will get more dull. Uh, Stay tuned to uh, www.jpost.com and uh, to the Land of Israel Network in order to uh, follow all the excitement that there's going to be in this election over the next few weeks ahead of April 9th. And uh, this has been Gil Hoffman here in Jerusalem. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye. This week on Israel Uncensored with Josh Haston, an exclusive interview with Moshe Feiglin, head of the Zahut Party. I don't care who's going to be the prime minister that the Hamas will defeat next time. We get orders from all people who want some direction, who want real solutions for the economy. That's Israel Uncensored with Josh Haston every Monday on the Land of Israel Network.